Okay, so Lucio, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, my name is Jaderson Shimoya, and uh, I am a professor at University Universidade Federal de Santa Maria. And today we talk a little bit about supermassive black holes and active galaxies. So I am a member of the uh, UFSM Astronomy Research Group. We are three, prof th three professors and nine MSc plus PhD students plus seven undergraduate students. So if you are interested in our research, please visit our web page. Okay. So what are active galaxies? So today we know that in the universe we have uh, at least more than 100 billion galaxies and some of these galaxies present a very peculiar behavior. In their center, there is a region that's very bright. The brightness of this region is comparable with the brightness of the entire galaxy. So we know with the physics that we know, uh, we know that this energy cannot be emitted only by stars. So what we do observe also is that there is emission of photons with energy uh, ranging from radio to X-rays. So this energy cannot be emitted only by stars. So what we know, or at least the most reasonable explanation, is in the center there is a supermassive black hole that's accreting matter. And in this process, um, the energy is transformed in other forms of energy. And we can see, for instance, the energy emitted via photons. So, and the extension of this energetic feedback from the accretion of matter can be observed in extensions larger than the, the, the extension of the galaxy in some cases. So what our group X studies is how this energetic, energetic feedback can impact the properties of the host galaxy, if it does at all, right? So what we do X study is how the energetic input of this nucleus can, um, can shape the galaxies, right? So one way you can study the nuclear region is with a spectroscopy. So on the left, I'm showing you the NGC 1097. It's a galaxy that I studied in the past. So here you can see the spiral arms, the stellar disk, and the central region. And in the center, this bright region is the nucleus that we call active nucleus. There, we know that there is a supermassive black hole that is accreting matter. So, in order to study this region, we have to observe this region with very large telescopes. One telescope, for instance, is the Gemini South Telescope. It has a mirror with a di diameter of 8 meters. So, it's a pretty large telescope. And here uh, at the bottom, I'm showing you the data that we can obtain from these observations. And uh, you can see one slit here. We call this long slit spectroscopy because we can collect the light from any region inside this slit. And once we collected the light, we disperse the light. So we can study how much energy this region emits in each wavelength. So on the right, I'm showing you the profile of the H-alpha emission line. H-alpha is a recombination line of the hydrogen. And on the right, I'm showing you in black the data. So it has, from the nuclear region, it has two peaks. And it's not just one line, it's two peaks of the, of the same line. And this happens because of the Doppler effect. The gas surrounding the supermassive black hole is orbiting the supermassive black hole. 
and the part of the disk that's going away from us emits um, the red part of the line. And the part of the gas that surrounds the supermassive black hole and is coming towards us is, uh, is emitting the blue part of the line. So have a split in the line. So in black, I sh I'm showing you uh, the data and in red, I'm showing you the modeling of the data that we can use to understand how the, the gas, the hydrogen is distributed around the supermassive black hole and also uh, investigate how it, it is the emissivity of the line uh, of this gas that's uh, surround the supermassive black hole. So here I'm showing you a video, a movie. Uh, on the left, we have in the center, the supermassive black hole, and we have a disk of hydrogen that's emitting the H alpha line. So we can model, for instance, the inner radius, the outer radius, and the surface emissivity of the emission line. And as the gas rotates around the supermassive black hole and is emitting the line, we can try to reproduce the data that we observe. So on the right, I'm showing you in, in blue is the data and the red is the modeling. So we are observing this disk from, from the bottom. So as the gas rotates around the supermassive black hole and the emissivity of the disk changes, we can try to reproduce the data that we observe. So we can study, for instance, or we can estimate the, ma the mass of the central supermass black hole. And the mass of supermass black hole is between, typically between 10 to the 6 uh, and 10, 10 to the 10 solar masses. So it's ve very, very big. <laughs> and uh, other properties that you can try to understand is, for instance, um, what's the extension of this region uh, that's emitting the line around the supermass black hole. So all this information helps um, us to understand how the process of accreting matter occurs on physical scales of a few light days around the supermass black holes. And it, it helps to understand how, how this central engine works in the nature, right? And okay. next one. So uh, our group also studies um, the relationship between this energetic, energetic feedback with the properties of the of the host galaxies. So is this energetic energetic feedback? Um, able to, for instance, blow away gas from the galaxy and quench star formation and leave the galaxy only with old stars, not newborn stars. This is something that we don't know yet. We observe galaxies as they are today and as they were in the past, but we don't know exactly what is the main mechanism to shape the galaxies as they are. So one possibility is that the energetic feedback from the accretion of matter into supermassive black holes can be uh, strong enough to, for instance, quench the star formation in galaxies. So in order to study this relationship be between supermassive black holes and its, and its host galaxy, we need more data. We need a lot of data, actually. So our group has access to a survey that's called the Mapping Nearby Galaxies at Apache Point Observatory. It's called Manga. And the survey observed 10,000 nearby galaxies with um, low, uh, integral field spectroscopy. So instead of, instead of having information only from the nuclear region, now we have information from the entire entire galaxy. So here is the galaxy, and these are called spaxels. 
from each region we have a spectrum so we can study properties of the gas and the stars um, in the entire galaxy so we can try to understand if there there are any differences in the properties of galaxies that host an active nucleus and with the properties of the galaxies that does not host an active nucleus so we compare this, uh, properties of active and inactive galaxies and in order to understand if actually this energetic feedback can uh, shape the galaxies or impact the galaxies as a whole. So another example is was published uh, by our group, and it's the Akira galaxy. So here I'm showing uh, example of the kind of data that we can ob uh, obtain with integral field spectroscopy. So here is the entire galaxy and we can measure the velocity of the stars and gas in each of these regions. So we can create velocity maps for stars and gas and compare, compare these two velocity maps. So in this case, we have a galaxy that is, we call, we call the galaxy retired galaxy because the galaxy has only old stars. There are not newborn stars so it's not forming new stars, it's retired. <laughs> and what uh, we saw here is a misalignment with, between the velocity field of the stars and the velocity field of the gas. So the remaining gas. And one possibility, one conclusion is that, well, maybe in the past, the active nucleus, the feedback of the active nucleus was strong enough to blow away the gas from the galaxy. And now there is not enough gas to form new stars. And this process misalignment the velocity field of the gas and the stars. So this is one example of the kind of study that we can do. So we are also we are still working with this data and there are several students that um, are also working with this data. So these are a few examples that I would like that I would like to talk and show you about what we can do and what we are doing in our group. So yes, that's what I had to I have to say. Thank you.